Hello, and welcome to the January installment of Construction Junction, presented to you by MSU Infrastructure Planning and Facilities. We hope that you'll find this new online format of Construction Junction useful and informative. If you have any comments or questions concerning this presentation, or have suggestions on how we might improve, please let us know via the feedback box on the Construction Junction webpage located at the address on the screen. We thank you in advance for helping us improve your experience. The agenda for the January presentation will begin with updates on which projects are going to the next two Board of Trustees meetings. Next will be an introduction to the GIS Campus Walking Maps application. We will then have an overview of the campus snow plan. There will then be a new project presentation on the Engineering Research Complex addition and renovation. Lastly, we will have project updates on 1855 Place and the Breslin Student Events Center facility upgrades. Beginning with the February BOT meeting, the projects going to the board will be, for Step 2, Authorization to Proceed, Permanent Field Lighting at Spartan Stadium, Replacement of the Ralph Young Track Field Hockey Surface, Alterations to Room E100 in the Veterinary Medical Center, Bessie Hall Alterations, and South End Zone Addition at Spartan Stadium. And for Step 3, Bid and Contract Award, Food Processing and Innovation Center, and the IM West Pool and Locker Room HVAC System Replacement. Moving on to the April BOT meeting, the projects going to the board will be, for Step 2, Authorization to Proceed, Wharton Setter Seating Replacement in the Great Hall, Engineering Research Complex Addition and Renovation, and Alterations to Jenison Fieldhouse Office Space. For Step 3, Bid and Contract Award, Parking Lot 92 Expansion and Reconstruction, Wharton Center Roof Replacement, and Trowbridge Road Repaving. IPF wishes everyone a safe and prosperous New Year. We know that many of you make resolutions and that one of the most popular resolutions is to improve your health by exercising more. IPF may be able to help you in achieving your goal. IPF's Facility Information Services, along with Geographic Information Services, provides an online application which highlights various walking tours of campus. There are several options, each of varying length, perfect for those lunchtime walks. Just visit the address on the screen. Click on any of the colored loops and you will see information about the length of the walk as well as a link to a printable PDF version of the entire map. The PDF map shows the location and length of every walking loop, making it easy for you to change up your walking routine, adding variety, and helping you stick with your resolution. Before you begin your new exercise routine, we ask that you practice good winter walking safety by wearing warm clothing and proper footwear that has a substantial tread and a flat bottom, being aware of the condition of your path and scanning ahead for potential problem areas, reducing the length of your stride in slippery areas, avoiding uneven walking surfaces and taking care when stepping from curbs and when ascending or descending stairs, and avoiding walking with your hands in your pockets you will need to use your arms for proper balance. A good set of warm gloves are absolutely necessary in cold weather. So lace up those shoes and hit the campus trails. We begin this month's presentation with an overview of the campus snow plan. Winter is now with us, and so when conditions warrant, we ask that you practice good snow safety by giving yourself extra time to travel to work, driving carefully, dressing warmly, wearing sensible shoes with good traction, being extra aware of where you are walking and the condition of your path, shortening the length of your stride, and remembering to check the forecast before heading outside. For your safety, please remember to not dart out in front of or behind snow removal equipment. It is large, loud, and difficult to stop quickly. And make eye contact with snow removal equipment operators before crossing in front of them. The university uses a combination of brine and ice melt compound to combat icy conditions. Brine solution works by preventing adhesion of snow to hard surfaces, while ice melt is used on ice that is already formed. Often both are used in combination to speed up the time it takes for melting compound to take effect. If you see any icy spots on campus, please call the campus operators at 353-1760 to report. Please remember that it does take time for ice melt compound to take effect. Here you can see the effect that preventative brining has on the ability of crews to cleanly remove snow and ice. 
The areas that were brined kept snow and ice from sticking to them, thus allowing complete removal. Unlike the areas that were not brined, which still retain some snow and ice even after snow removal equipment has passed. Again, an example of the preventative effect of brining ahead of a snow event. We ask that the campus community partner with IPF crews to help ensure everyone's safety by applying ice melt compound to areas outside of building entrances if they see slick spots. This helps avoid incidents until our crews have had a chance to clear the area. There are marked buckets of ice melt compound available at all entrances for this purpose. However, we also ask that you please be judicious with your use of ice melt in order to minimize the environmental impact. Please do not park so close to sidewalks that your vehicle's bumper hangs over it. This makes clearing the sidewalk with our motorized equipment impossible. We ask that you avoid parking in sections of lots that have not yet been cleared, either parking in already cleared areas or waiting for our crews to finish clearing the lot before parking. We remind everyone that parking is prohibited in residence hall loops from 2 to 6 a.m. Our crews have a formidable task ahead of them after a snow event, and keeping these areas free from vehicles helps removal efforts go more smoothly and quickly. Again, if you see icy or dangerous spots on campus, please call a campus operator at 353-1760. If you're not able to call, you can also tweet us at MSU Facilities. For more information about MSU's snow removal plans, visit ipf.msu.edu. There you can find information on snow and ice removal services, as well as our environmentally green efforts. You can also email any feedback, suggestions, or comments to snowplan at ipf.msu.edu. We thank you for helping us keep MSU safe during the upcoming winter season. We now have a new presentation on the Engineering Research Complex project to expand the Fraunhofer Center. The Engineering Research Complex is located in the South Academic District. This project is necessary to expand the Fraunhofer Center for Coatings and Diamond Technologies by renovating current space and building of an addition to the facility. The ultimate design of the project is currently being finalized. It will include conversion of space currently in the Engineering Research Complex and the construction of an addition to the facility. The project will also include upgrading of the existing electrical service, as well as consolidation of chillers, which will free up space currently occupied by mobile cooling units, support existing infrastructure, increase energy efficiency, and take advantage of free cooling. Impacts to the campus community will include increased construction traffic in and around the ERC, parking lot 97, and Woodlot Drive. Construction is scheduled to begin in April and should be completed by the end of the year. Here you see elevation graphics for four possible options for the project. Designers are currently weighing each option to finalize the project plans. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the Fraunhofer Center expansion project can be directed to the construction representative, Ken Gottschalk. We next have an update on the 1855 Place project. This project is located in the Northwest Residential Mixed-Use Districts at the former site of the Michigan State Police Post. The goals of this project include creating a living environment that supports both single students and student families around the resources they need to be academically successful, creating an institutional asset to further our world-class land-grant mission, consolidating office spaces from across campus, freeing up space for academic programs while saving resources and improving communications, and creating synergies between residential and hospitality services and intercollegiate athletics. The scope of the project will include a 102,000 square foot mixed-use office building that will be LEED Silver certified, which will include RHS offices, intercollegiate athletic offices, as well as retail space creation of 438,000 square feet of student apartments, both single student apartments as well as family housing apartments, and creation of 2,075 parking spaces, including a parking deck, to accommodate students, staff, and campus events. Funding sources for this project will come from auxiliary funds, from RHS, intercollegiate athletics, and parking fees. Construction on this project commenced in the summer of 2015 the new parking ramp opened in April of 2016. 
the family housing units were ready for occupancy in August of 2016. The single student housing units are expected to be opened sometime in August of 2017, as well as the various retail spaces in the new mixed-use tower. The Office Tower, Hall of Champions, and the Housing Assignment Office should be ready for occupancy sometime this October. The site as it existed prior to the start of construction shows the location of University Village, which will remain after construction is complete, the location of event parking, which has been relocated to the south, as well as the three structures that have been demolished or relocated. The site redevelopment will include building of new family housing, single student apartments, retail and office space, and a new parking deck and surface lot. This project will be completed in two phases in order to minimize disruptions and to maintain event parking availability during the entirety of the project. Phase one included demolition of the existing police post buildings and the theater department scene shop, which was relocated to South Campus next to the MSU Federal Credit Union. Phase one also included the construction of the parking ramp and surface lot, as well as the construction of three family housing units. During phase one construction, a temporary construction access road was installed to the west of the site. Phase two of the project includes construction of the single student apartment buildings, as well as the office and retail towers. During this phase, event parking has been moved to the newly constructed parking deck and surface lot. Here you see an aerial view rendering of the project showing the location of the new parking ramp, the office and retail towers, single student apartment buildings, the existing university village structures, and the new family housing units. Here you see the address and building name assignments for the project. Please note that the address of the communication storage university village building is changing from 1165 Garden City Road to 1159 Pine Tree Court. The address of the parking booth for lot 63 is also changing from 721 South Harrison Road to 675 South Harrison Road. Here is a view of the proposed office tower showing the intercollegiate athletic space on the top floor. And here is a view of the proposed mixed-use tower from the corner of Harrison and Kalamazoo. Exterior work on the single student townhome units is now complete. Here you see an example of some of the interior finishes in the single student housing units. Exterior work on the student housing unit end caps continues. These end caps will house common areas for apartment residents, such as mailboxes and fitness centers. A view of the progress being made on the exterior of the office portion of the tower complex shows the intercollegiate office spaces on the top floor. And another view of the office portion of the tower complex this time from the west. Work on the interior of the tower complex continues with the installation of fire protection coatings and HVAC ductwork. And another view of the interior work currently in progress. HVAC units have been installed on the roof of the office tower. They are surrounded by metal screening to make for a more aesthetically pleasing view from street level. For those of you who would like to follow progress of construction on this project, please check out the live webcam site at the address on the screen. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the 1855 Place project can be directed to the project representative, Andy Linebaugh. Lastly, we have an update on the work that is being done as part of the Breslin Student Event Center Facility Upgrades Project. The Breslin Center is located in the Athletic and Recreation District. The university is undertaking this project in order to enhance the student, alumni, fan, and public experience by improving the functionality of the event center, to create a lasting legacy by integrating a sense of Spartan tradition throughout the facility, and to extend the useful life of the building by improving services to the fans and implementing major maintenance items. The project is being divided into two phases, facility upgrades and athletics addition. The phases are being designed in a way that minimizes rework and are being fully coordinated throughout their design and construction. Phase one includes a 22,000 square foot addition around the building, an expanded concourse, renovation and upgrading of the restroom facilities, renovation of concession stands, improvements to the entry vestibules to the main concourse, improvements to finish levels and experience on the concourse, improvements to site conditions for ingress and egress, improvements to site security, replacement of the chiller system, 
and connection to the East Lansing water system. Phase two includes a 30,000 square foot addition, which will create a sense of main entry and destination into the building and includes a basketball hall of history. Construction on this project began in January of 2016 and is expected to be complete by August of this year. Here you see the proposed floor plan of the completed facility upgrades showing the expansion of the concourse areas, the new restroom and concession areas, and the new Hall of History. As part of the Breslin upgrade, there will also be changes to the area surrounding the center. A new plaza outside the Hall of History is planned, with the Magic Johnson statue being slightly relocated to accommodate the new addition. There will also be improvements to adjacent parking and loading areas, as well as a new crosswalk across Harrison Road to the newly constructed parking ramp. Here is a graphic showing the work that is ongoing from the period of late October 2016 to March of 2017, highlighting the areas of the work site that are still in construction as well as the areas that are complete and in operation. A view of the progress being made on the southwest addition exterior, and a view of the same area from the interior. This addition will house additional restroom facilities for the center. Here you see a view of the work currently in progress on the Hall of History addition. Temporary sheeting has been installed on the exterior to protect interior work from the elements. Another view of the Hall of History addition showing the entrance area. Work on the interior of the Hall of History continues with the construction of the lower level strength and conditioning room. Here you see an artist rendering of the Hall of History Plaza, which will include the relocated Magic Johnson statue. For those of you who would like to follow the progress of construction on this project, please check out the live webcam site at the address on the screen. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the Breslin Center Facility Upgrades project can be directed to the construction representative, Jason Van Zee. This concludes the January Construction Junction presentation. We encourage you to visit the Infrastructure Planning and Facilities website at www.ipf.msu.edu. There you will find information on construction and maintenance alerts, detour information, construction junction information, project and contact information. There are also a number of other IPF resources available, including listservs that you can subscribe to to keep up to date with various IPF projects and events. Stay connected with IPF via social media. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, watch our videos on YouTube, and follow us on Instagram. Construction Junction presentations will be made available on the CJ website beginning the 7th of each month. We thank you for taking the time to check us out and we hope you'll visit again.